Hi, uh, myself Navin Kumar Sani. In the course microprocessor, in code KCS403. Today we are going to discuss about the interrupt in 885 microprocessor. So this is one of the very very important topic which we are going to discuss, and it's very very important for the university exams as well. So first thing is what is the interrupt and what is the uses of the interrupt and how it generates. Uh, in the program, what are different ways uh, for the interrupt to which occur into the any of the program, maybe the from the external devices, maybe within the program and how it is generated. So everything we are going to discuss into this. So first thing is the interrupt, the basic definition of the interrupt is it is a special condition that arises during the working of the MUP. So as the MUP is working into the main program, so in that the any of the interruption can occur into the during execution of the program. So this is nothing but the interrupt. So in that in response to that the MUP services the interrupt and it is uh, by executing a subroutine called the interrupt service routine. So in short we call it the ISR interrupt service routine. Okay, so the, this is a small program uh, which occur after uh, as the MUP executes its own instruction and interrupt occurs. So first the MUP will execute its main instruction which is into the process and after that the subroutine or the ISR will be executed. So ISR have generally its own different addresses through which uh, we have to call that subroutine and it will execute. So then MUP checks for the interrupts during the every instruction. So as we said in the main program which we have suppose this one is the main program and in every instruction after every instruction the MUP checks if any interrupt is occurred into the uh, ex during execution of the main program or not. So this is a process of the interruption. So if in case the interrupt occurs, then the MUP first finishes its the main instruction or the current instruction and then it pushes the address of the next instruction into the PC or the, into the stack. So what is that basically? So suppose as we said this is the main program is executing, this is our main program. Okay. So as we said the MUP checks all the time the any kind of interrupt. And uh, sometimes, suppose I am taking the example of the call instruction and this is 2050. So what is the meaning of this? When at this point, one of the any subroutines is written at this address 2050. So what will happen? So as this instruction is executed, in just previous instruction is executed. So after that, the call will be uh, into the process. Then it will go to the 2050. At the 2050, one of the ISR is written, inter service routine are written. So if this, this address is at the 2009, okay, and next address is 2008. So what will happen? So as the 2009 is executing, then the address of 2008, this address will be stored into the uh, stack and the address of 2050 will be stored into the PC. So this 20, uh, 200A will be stored into the stack, stack pointer. Okay. So it shows that uh, when whichever program is executing, maybe the main program, maybe the ISR. So that address will be into the PC or the program counter. And we are if we are calling any of the address, then the next address of the main program will be stored into the stack. So this is a procedure for uh, whenever the ISR is executing. So after that, uh, is as ISR is completed its own function. So what will happen? So if this ISR which is executing and the, at the last this is RET return address will be uh, this is a return call. So after that, what will happen? It will come to the main program. So main program is stored at the two zero zero A. And it will fetch the content from the stack pointer to the program counter. So in the main program will be executing. So then uh, it resets the INTE flip flop so that no more interrupts are recognized. 
So we have some of the pins which we will discuss in the architecture of uh, AT uh, in this interrupt. So what is the concept uh, of uh, resetting the all the interrupts or masking or unmasking of the interrupts. So we will discuss about that. So thereafter the program control transfers to the address of the ISR and the MUP thus executes the ISR. So as we said about the interrupts, so as the interrupt is calling, so what will happen? So this 2050 address will store into the I, uh, PC and the next instruction address in the main of the main program 200A will store into the stack pointer. Okay. So as the return call is uh, as the, this ISR is completed and the return instruction is coming to the picture into the main in this program then what will happen again it will come back to the main program and this 200A will store into the PC and the main program will be executed. So in broadly classification of the interrupt is it is uh, divided into two parts uh, software interrupts and the hardware interrupts. So in that software interrupt so this, uh, these interrupts are initiated through the main program into the main program are uh, called a software interrupts. So this is within the main program. And in 885 microprocessor, there is a eight software interrupts, and this is defined as the RSTs. So we call it the RSTN. So RSTN, where N is the uh, 0 to 7. So as we said, there is a eight interrupts, which is starting from RST 0 to RST 7. RST 0, 1, RST 2, RST 3, RST 4, RST 5, RST 6 and RST 7. So these are the restart uh, 0 to restart 1. Okay, so students most of the time become confused about this number, uh, the uh, this RST, some uh, few students think this is the reset, but this is not the reset. This is a restart, a restart 0 to restart 7. So these are the eight uh, interrupt. So the in that uh, we have to find what is the addresses of these software interrupts. So these software interrupts have the interrupt uh, addresses. So how we call these addresses? These addresses are defined by the n into eight. Okay. So uh, just like this, if this is the RST zero, so RST zero address will be zero 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 h, and RST one. So simply we have to multiply with the eight. So these addresses will be just like 0 to 8. So this value will be 0, 0, 0, 0, H. If you are multiplying n is 1 and we are multiplying with the 8. So this value in the hexadecimal we can write it as a 0, 0, 0, 1, H. Similar to that we have 2, 2 into 8. So this will be 0, 0, 1, 0, H. Okay. So this is a way how we can define this RST vector, vectors for the different ISTs. So if RST1 just for example, so this occurs, then the uh, 8, so this one will be 8, I am sorry for this. So then the program control moves to the location 0, 0, 0, 8. So how we are getting this, we, this is simply 1 into 8, that is 0, 0, 0, 0, H. So by default this value of the hexadecimal. So as we know that uh, in microprocessor, we define these addresses or all, all the numbers into the hexadecimal numbers. So these conversions are very, very important to know about how to convert the binary to hexa or the decimal to hexa numbers. So respective addresses for the software interrupts which are given into uh, in this in this table. So how it looks like. Uh, just like as we said RST0, so this RST0 is nothing but 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, So how we are getting this? This is uh, the formula which we have n into 8. So this will be 0 into 8, that is equal to this one. This is 1 into 8, this is equal to this. And uh, this is 2 into 8, that is equal to 0, 0, 1, 0. So simply this is nothing but this is a 16, 10. Okay. So when we convert this 16 uh, base 10 to the hexadecimal, so this 16 will be equal to 1, 0, right? Uh, similar to that, uh, 3 into 8, 24. So in this 24 can be written as the 0, 0, 1, 8H. Then we have RST4. So this is the 4 into 8. So this will be 32, 10 and so on. So this is 0, 0, 2, 0 and so on. So simply we have to simply multiply the n into 8 and we have uh, that number will be in the decimal number. 
but we have to convert this decimal number into the hexadecimal number then this all list of the uh, RSTs we, we can get it easily right so 0 0 to 38 so these are hexadecimal numbers of the software interrupts then we can uh, we will talk about the hardware interrupts so we have five hardware interrupts so these interrupts uh, which are initiated through the any hardware pin are called the hardware interrupts so uh, if you are going through the pin diagram of 885 microprocessor then uh, in that case you have to, you have definitely seen that these pins are mentioned there which is starting from the trap then rst 7.5 rst 6.5 rst 5.5 and the intr so uh, this 885 supports basically five hardware interrupts and uh, through the five pins which is available into 8085 microprocessor architecture another way of classifying this uh, interrupt is the vector and the non vector interrupt so these interrupt which have the addresses or the fixed addresses is called the vector interrupts so these vector interrupts uh, just like uh, trap is uh, one of the vector interrupt rsts have the vector interrupt like here trap is the vector interrupt rst 7.5 is the vector interrupt 6.5 is the vector interrupt rst 5.5 is the vector interrupt and this so all these four are the vector interrupt and this intr this is nothing but the non vector interrupt okay so when he is talking uh, about this the vector interrupt it means there is a fixed addresses which is specified uh, into this and uh, non vector interrupt example which have a variable addresses for their isrs so these vectors are just for the isr addresses so this is the intr this is a non vector interrupt so uh, any external device can be uh, connect with this intr but uh, these are variable addresses so first of all we have to de define or find the address uh, for that particular device then only the isr will be generated then uh, in that we have the maskable and non-maskable interrupts so in that there is a, this very very important question which generally comes into the exams about the what what are the different methods for preventing an interrupt from the occurring so how we can uh, we can uh, prevent the interrupt to occur first is the masking so this masking the individual bits through the sim instruction so this is set interrupt mask as sim instruction is used for the masking and unmasking the uh, any of the interrupt or second method is to uh, disable all the interrupts uh, which we have uh, through the di instruction okay so these two instructions are used first is the sim instruction second one is the di instruction through which we can mask or we can prevent to occur the in any of the interrupt then we have the masking what is the definition of the masking so in that uh, masking we can prevent an interrupt from the occurring by masking an individual bit through the sim instruction if the interrupt is masked then it will not be serviced okay so it will not be serviced and one of the main advantage of masking is to oppose and disable the interrupts in that way that masking we can selectively disable to a particular program particular interrupt so main thing is suppose uh, there is a four in, uh, four requests are coming into uh, into this pins okay so in this four pins if i want to mask any of the just like for 7.5 rst 7.5 i want to disable it so for that i have to mask 7.5 and i will unmask the trap uh, rst 6.5 so this is the one of the interrupt which cannot be masked okay so we cannot uh, we cannot mask this interrupt that is a trap which is of very very high priority okay so this is basic definition so only rst 7.5 rst 6.5 and rst 5.5 can be masked by the method using the sim instructions but trap we cannot uh, we cannot mask it okay so if you, i want to unmask i want to mask all the interrupts or you can say i want to disable all the interrupts so for that one we have the inter, uh, one of the instruction that is the di instruction through which we can uh, disable all the interrupts so disable interrupting in that uh, disable through the di instruction and uh, in that 
this instruction reset the INTE flip flop and the hence none of the interrupts can be occurred except the trap. As I said, trap is the interrupt which we cannot mask at all uh, by any of the method. So this if any interrupt is any request is coming on through the trap pin, so it has to be executed. Okay, so we cannot stop to execute this uh, trap pin. And once uh, we disable all the interrupts, so uh, we have another instruction by which we can enable all the interrupts, right? So for the disabling, we have the DI and for the enable the interrupts, we had the EI instruction, enable interrupt. So after that, the masking or unmasking can occur. So first of all, we have to enable the interrupt. So let's come to the little bit description about the hardware interrupts where we have a trap has the highest priority. It is edge and the label triggered both. As we said, it is a non-maskable interrupt and can neither be masked nor be disabled. So it is vectored interrupt and has the highest address of zero. Uh, it has the vectored interrupt and has the vector address of 0024. Okay. So how we can get this number 0024? Simply we assume this value is again we will apply the n into 8. So this is the uh, we will take trap as a 4.5 and into 8. So in this way uh, this value will be 0024 into hexadecimal. So whatever value we are getting through this uh, for the decimal number when we convert into the hexadecimal number then we will get the 0024H. Then we have uh, RST 7.5. So RST 7.5 has the priority which is lower than the trap signal and uh, trap pin and it is edge triggered. It is maskable interrupt and which can be through the SIM instruction. We can mask it through the SIM instruction. It can also be disabled through the DI instructions and it is vectored interrupt, uh, a vectored interrupt whose vector ISI address is 003C. So this number again we can get it. The, with the same formula uh, n into 8. So here n is 7.5 into 8. So this number when we convert into the hexadecimal number. So this number will be equal to 003CH. Okay. Then we have R6.5. Uh, so this is the again uh, priority which is lower than the 7.5. It is label triggered, mask interrupt, and uh, this can be disabled through the DI instruction. And vector interrupt, these are the properties. Address is again 0034. So, how we can we can get it? This number. So, this number we can get the 6.5 into this. Uh, simply we can uh, multiply with the 8. So, when we convert this number into the uh, hexadecimal, so this number which we can get it uh, 0034. Okay. And similar to that uh, for the 5.5. When we talk about the 5.5, RST 5.5, so in that uh, this is lowest lower priority than the 6.5, which is label triggered, maskable interrupts, and again it can also be disabled through a DI instruction. And then uh, next uh, property of uh, RST 5.5 is a vector interrupt, which has the vector in, uh, vector address of 002C. So again the question rises, uh, how we can get this number? So this number again we can get the n into 8, and here n is nothing but 5.5 and into 8. So this number we can get it when we convert uh, from decimal to hexadecimal number. Then another interrupts are INTR. So INTR is the high priority lower than the RC 5.5. It is label triggered and then DI instruction can be used to disable this interrupt. It cannot be masked through the SIM instruction. Okay, So we cannot mask this, in, uh, this interrupt and this is non vector interrupt. Then uh, we have the acknowledgement into that for the interrupts. So if INTR is the request to the mu p, then the acknowledgement of the mu p will be INTA. So this is the interrupt acknowledgement. It is active low acknowledgement signal. What is the meaning of this? It means uh, it, this signal will be INTA bar. So all the signals which, which are uh, bar like INTA bar. So, this is active low signal. Okay, So, uh, the significance of this one is uh, this signal is given in the response to an interrupt uh, on the INTR only. Okay, So, first INTA is given the interrupting peripheral sense to 
an opcode and this opcode is of ISTN and then the ISR address is calculated as n into 8. So, if the opcode is of uh, call instruction then in that case the two more INTA pulses can be generated. So, which are given as the lower byte and then higher bytes of the ISR address which are sent by the peripheral devices. So, these are the pro procedure for the acknowledgement of the signal uh, through via uh, mu p to the peripheral devices. Then we have another signals like EI and DI instructions. So, this EI and DI instructions are used for enable the interrupt and the disable the interrupt. So, this uh, it can be all the interrupts can be enabled by the signal or the instruction that is EI and there are different three ways uh, through which we can reset the all the interrupts. First one is if we simply reset the mu p then in that case the interrupts will be disabled and second instruction is the DI instruction it is executed then in that case all the interrupts will be disabled or any other interrupt is recognized by the mu p. So, there are, these are the three different ways through which the mu p can uh, disable all the interrupts. So, in the uh, table form uh, it is mentioned how the interrupt priorities are there or the different properties of all the interrupts are there. The highest priority which is of trap and uh, as we mentioned uh, highest priority but it is a level and edge trigger it is it cannot be masked and it cannot be disabled and it is a vector quantity uh, vector interrupt and the address for this vector is the 0024 okay. So, as we said the any request which is coming through this trap signal it cannot be avoided it, it has to be executed right. So, after that we have a rest of the hardware interrupts like RST 7.5, 6.5, 5.5. So, these are the priority order from 1 to 5. INTR is one of the hardware interrupt and then uh, the, these are triggering uh, what are triggering pulse of these signals uh, for this uh, interrupts are agent level for the R trap, edge trigger for the RST 7.5, RST 6.5 for the level trigger, level trigger for the RST 5.5 and the INTR also are used for the through the level trigger. Then maskable as we said these three are the maskable interrupts are T 7.5, 6.5 and the 5.5. So, these three are the maskable interrupts which we can mask through the SIM instructions. Then INTR we cannot mask it and the trap as we said is the highest priority we cannot mask this type of interrupts and disabling uh, these all the four interrupts can be disabled by using the DI instruction. Then uh, all these, uh, all the starting four, these are the addresses or vector uh, vector interrupts. Uh, who's uh, who has them? All the vector addresses are mentioned there. For the trap, we have 0024 for the RST 7.5, 003C, and then 6.534 and 5.52C. So these are the vectors for that. Then INTR gets the ISI address from the external hardware and these addresses can be enabled by using the software, software interrupts. So, this architecture, systematic diagram uh, or architecture of interrupt of 885 is mentioned into this slide. Where it is mentioned that uh, uh, in the trap, we can find the trap first which is because this is of highest uh, priority. So, here we see that the priority number 1 for that for the trap signal as and level triggered. So, these are the properties for the trap and we see this is a straight line for this and the address is like this. There is no interruption, no maskable, non-masking, nothing is required when the any signal is coming onto this uh, pin of 885 microprocessor then it has to be executed. So, directly it will come to the this address right. right. So, as we said there, there are the three interrupts like RST 7.5 which is of second priority, RST 6.5, RST 5.5. So, these interrupts can be masked. So, for that masking we have this uh, uh, block you can see mask 7.5, mask 6.5, mask 5.5. So, these are the pins which can mask the uh, any of the signal right. Then RST 7.5 had the one type of one flip flop, uh, we had the one flip flop that is deep flip flop is there. So, it means uh, at this pin if one is coming then output will be one here. So, this can be also be disabled uh, 
by the clearing the this one right so how we can clear it this is the or, or gate so if n if both are zeros then only output will be zero and in this case the it can be cleared okay so it means it cannot be cleared so what we require we require if any of the signal here one then in that case output will be one and it will be clear will be one and in this case rst 7.5 will be disabled right similar to that if i want to mask uh, uh, this interrupt the what i will do i will connect the one here if one is here then zero will be there when zero is there then this is a nand gate the output will be zero similar to that if i want to mask 6.5 one i have to put here and one is there then zero is here when zero is here then zero is here similar to that if i want to mask 5.5 i will put the one here one is here then output is zero here then zero is the output then output is also zero so it means they it means if i want to mask any of the 7.5 6.5 or either uh, uh, else 5.5 uh, in that case i have to put one here so if i want to mask all these three then again i have to give the one here in both the three then output will be zero so these are the they are the ways how to mask this signal so these masking bits are into the sim instruction as we said right when we go for a sim architecture or sim format so in that case we see that uh, in sim if i will put the one into this place then in that case it will the masking in that case suppose i want to mask only 6.5 so what i will do i will put one here and zero here and the zero here so in that case it will be the uh, masking of the 6.5 is that clear and then as we said uh, uh, in this way suppose i want to disable i want to disable the interrupts so what i will do i want to disable it means i can put one here or one or one anything if i will put one here then output will be one if output is one in this case whatever is there then output will be zero here the right? sr flip flop table you are aware about that then this is disable uh, this will not be one so this will be zero and this will be one right so in that case output will be zero if it is zero it means this is zero will come here so it will become zero this zero will come here it will become zero this zero will come here it will become zero this zero will come here this will become zero so if i will put di reset or any interrupt response any is one in that case the if any is one then output will be of all gate will be one if output of all gate is one it means r signal is one if the reset signal is one it means output will be zero when this is zero so all the end gate will be zero it means all the um, all are masked you can say or you can say these are disabled right if i want to enable this flip flop then i have to put enable one if this is one this will become one so when this is one then this will be enabled this will be enabled this will be enabled and this will be enabled right so these are the ways how to disable or enable the interrupts last point in that is the first uh, fifth priority which is of intr if any of the signal is coming here then it can it can be if one is here and it is also one in that case this will enable the this get isr at this from the external devices so this can be generated by this uh, if we we can see these are software uh, interrupts which is mentioned rst0 to rst4 5 6 and 7 okay so these are the hardware interrupts which is uh, it will be seven okay so these are the hardware interrupts uh, software interrupts which is uh, which can be enabled through the intr pin okay so this is a complete picture of interrupts of 8085 microprocessor i hope this point is clear to all of you so here we can see uh, that uh, this are uh, enable uh, i mean these are the address 0 8 10 18 20 24 20, 20, these are only the sequences right these are increasing order of the sequence that is why this uh, arrow uh, these are looks like this right so these are the only increasing order oh, okay so i hope this point is clear to all of you uh, to generate the interrupts in the 885 microprocessor thank you very much from my side